All right, welcome. Uh, we're going to move our database to the cloud today. So you've probably heard a lot about cloud computing, and we're, we'll talk a little bit about that first before we jump into this. I'm going to close this window back here for just a moment. All right, so let's talk a little bit about moving to Azure, what that really means. Azure is Microsoft's cloud service. There are other providers out there like Amazon, but we'll focus on the Microsoft solution. You may have also heard something like uh, Microsoft Cloud. They're doing some name changes on things. So up until now, we've, we have um, run our web server, uh, web service, our REST web service, and our database all on our local machine. And we're going to change that. So our database and application runs on that server. So in a cloud computing environment, your application or services or database service, in this case, can run in the cloud. So the app, your application isn't on your local machine the way we have it now, but you can access it from here through the network, through a portal, and we'll show you that in just a minute. Um, there's really two modes that you can set up cloud <coughs> resources in most of these services. One is to just set up a remote server. So it's just like having it under your desk. It's just that it's hosted in a data center somewhere that they control and that you have access to, but you have full access to that server to configure it pretty much any way that you want to. Now another way that's a little bit easier to get into, which we're going to start into, is basically uh, we just really care about the database itself running out there. We don't really care so much about trying to set up and maintain the server that the database runs on. So we're just going to go out there and configure the database and let them worry about what server to put it on. It could be on multiple servers, depending on how large your database is. There's lots of choices there. So it's still a virtual machine, but it doesn't matter which one. You can access it and configure the service, but you, you can't get on the machine in most cases and, and mess with the machine settings. So those are our two choices. We're taking the orange path here rather than the green path, and we're just going to set up out there. And we will start that process by logging into the Azure portal. Remember, Azure is Microsoft's cloud service. So I'll just do a quick Google search for the Azure portal. And we can log into this. And I'll go ahead and sign in. Now, before I sign in, let me just talk about how you might... Uh, get on Azure. Azure, like AWS, is a paid service, so you pay for what you use. There are programs out there if you're a student to get some free Azure credits. Microsoft occasionally runs some developer um, some developer programs uh, that you can get some free uh, free um, you, uh, resource time. You also, if you're a part of the MSDN program, you can get some free Azure time. Otherwise, you're going to be paying for most things. Uh, Microsoft does allow uh, smaller websites to run for free right now, which is kind of a marketing thing that they're doing. Uh, with AWS and Azure, you can pick, um, you can do 30-day, 60-day trials for free, which gives you a good chance to play around with things and see how they work. So we'll go ahead and sign in here. So this is my portal. Uh, I don't have anything configured out here right now. There's no services running. And uh, you'll notice here it comes up and tells me I've got, a, I'm, uh, with this developer program benefit, I've got a little time. So you manage, you manage your billing here, how much you're getting billed. You can look at things historically. You can look at the different services that are out here. I'm not going to drill into a lot of detail on the Azure portal itself, because what we care about is actually creating a new database out here. And I'm going to do that by hitting the new button there. And I'm going to search for, there's many different services that I can basically set up. And I'm, I'm interested in MySQL. And so, um, Microsoft has partnered uh, with ClearDB to provide you a MySQL database option out here. Now, these, these other ones that are out here, um, there's different choices, um, but we're not going to use those. We're going to use ClearDB. It's a service. We may redo these exercises at some point with SQL Server or with some of the other databases that are out there. But for right now, this will just show how we can actually get things working up in Azure. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And it tells me some things about the publisher, so on and so forth. I'm going to hit Create. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to make me answer some questions. 
So we'll call this our employee DB. That all has to be lowercase. Um, you can get, again, different benefits. This one, if you don't have these options, you have to go with whatever program you're under here. Uh, we're going to create a new resource group, so don't worry necessarily about what that is. We just have to give it a name, so I'm just going to call it the database name. Think of a resource group as just kind of a cate categorization of different resources that are out there on the system for right now. Uh, pricing tier, uh, we need to pick one and, and approve it, and there's different types here. And we're going to pick this smallest one that happens to be free and you'll notice some of these other ones charge us so this is 350 a month 999 a month again you pay as you go we're going to take the free option uh, there's uh, different locations you can put your database now you can consider that if you're happen to be in japan maybe you want to pick japan east or west uh, we're just going to leave it with the default here of central us you can use any of those locations i could be connected to the database in japan so this is just saying where they're going to configure it, and they'll put it in a data center there. And uh, legal terms, you've got to go in and review those. So it basically says you're going to get charged $0 a month, and I like that. So we'll go ahead and say that's fine. And we will go ahead and hit Create. And if we filled out everything right, it's going to go through a process of actually configuring that database for us. Now, once it's configured, it will give us some information that we'll need to connect to it. And that'll be important. All right, so let's see what's out there now. If we click on all resources, we don't see anything out there yet, so it's still in the process of doing some creating for us. So we'll just stand by. If this take, I'll I'll pause the recording until this comes back. Database got created. It actually only took about a minute to do, but I didn't want to just waste uh, video time uh, making you wait. So. All right, so our database is created out there. Now this database doesn't have anything in it. It's empty. Um, so what we want to do is just look at some properties that are out here. And um, we, you'll notice that what I did here, um, this is all resources, and this will list any services that I have running. I click this, and it tells me some thing about, thing, things about it. Here's its host name. It's on a free plan. It can only be... 20 megabytes, which should be fine for what we're doing. And then down here, it tells us uh, some statistics about it, which is nice. Um, and let's go ahead and select properties now, because that's what we're really uh, interested in. So it has a host name here, a port, a username, a password. By the way, don't bother trying to use this username and password or the host name. I'm going to be deleting this database as soon as we're done uh, demonstrating it here. Um, so you'll need to set up your own. And down here it's got a connection string, uh, so that's really good. So the first thing we're going to do is just see if we can connect to this thing using uh, MySQL Workbench. So I'm going to launch that. We'll get that running. And I've actually done a test out here, so we will delete. We will delete this one. And we will create a new Azure connection. So I'm going to call this. Um, Azure DB and uh, the connection method is fine. The host name though we need to use the host name that comes from here and we we can just hit the little icon here to copy and so let's go back in and, and uh, paste that in. The username is down here. We'll copy that. You could also just highlight it and copy it as well. Either way works. So let's copy that in. The username is there. And then the password. Now the password, I want to tell you something. If you want uh, my the, the SQL Workbench to work, this has to be stored in the vault. So under the option here that says store in vault, you must do that. If you do not do that, it will not connect. It's a security feature. All right, so let's test it and see if we have anything there. And it comes back and says it successfully made it. So I'm confident at this point that I have a database out there, so I can now manage it from SQL, um, from from my SQL Workbench. So let's open this up and see what we have. So we have one schema out here. This is the nature of how uh, ClearDB works. There's no tables, so we need some tables, 
And the question is, where do we get the tables? Well, we have a local instance of the database running. So I have my local copy here. And what I'm going to do is go down here to Table Personnel and right-click on it. And I'm going to select Copy to Clipboard, the Create statement for that. And I'm going to jump back to Azure DB. And I'm going to paste that in. And I'm going to hit the Execute. And it says it hasn't selected a database, so we'll come over here and say uh, set this as the default schema and run that again, and then it will work okay. So it created my table for me, and if I refresh, you'll see that that table, let me just move things around here a little bit so we can see it. So now our table personnel is created, and it's all there just as it was the other way. It doesn't have any data in it. All I did was just create it, and I will do that for the other tables as well. So let me... Right click, copy to clipboard, the create statement, jump back over to Azure, and we will paste, and we will execute, and we got that table, and let's do the final one, the third one here, um, we will right click and copy to clipboard, uh, create statement again, and back to the Azure DB connection that we have and we will put that in and execute it. So now we have all three of our tables. We basically have an identical database and we will refresh all and see that we have all three tables there. We do. They all look great. So we're really done with MySQL Workbench where the database is out there. We have a connection ready to go. So I'm going to close that down. We don't need that right now. All right. The next thing we need to do is modify our code to use the connection string that we have. So we have a connection string. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to launch our project that we have. So let's open that up. It is our simple REST server that we've been working with. And you may remember that we did some work here on configuration to get us a configuration that we could use. So let's bring that up as soon as this gets started. And that's in the DB Connections config file, you remember. We had this alias called local DB, and even though now that it's a cloud DB, I'm not going to change that because I'd have to change the code. What I am going to do, though, is change this connection string. Now, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this. I'm going to paste in the connection string that I got from Azure, and I'm just going to do a little manipulating here. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to preserve my local connection if I need it for some reason for testing. And so it's always a good idea to kind of not um, just destroy configuration information. Then this connection string that comes from Azure, we are going to copy and paste this. And again, remember, I'm going to be wiping out this database so you, the user ID and password and the database host and all that will not be available to you to use from my Azure account. You can create your own. You want to be careful sharing that type of information out on the Internet. There are people out there that are looking to grab compute resources on Amazon or Azure and use it for various purposes that they have. Bitcoin mining, spamming people, there's all kinds of reasons that they might want to do that. Search for extraterrestrial life. In any case, you want to guard your account information. This is not anymore under your desk where no one can get at it. It is now out there in the public cloud where anybody can get at it. And we will be talking about authentication here and, and securing things at some point soon. But right now, we've got our connection. So that's the only change we have to make because we did such a good job with our configuration here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and launch this. And once it gets running, we will go try this out and see if our database is actually working for us. We'll go grab something to put in it. Okay, our server's running now. And so we have our portal here, and we have our server, and now we're going to open up a new tab and run DHC and have our... Um, We'll have our REST client application that we're using. And so what we'll do to start with is we'll do a post to create a new thing. So we're going to create this new person right here. So we'll do a post on the person. And if everything's connected right, it should work. Okay, it says it created it. 
Now we know that if we do a get on person, well, we need to tell it which one, or we have to say person. So let's do that. Oops, sorry. So we got to tell it which one. So we're going to say one. And it goes back and gets that. Now let's see if we actually see that in our SQL in our MySQL workbench. Let's connect to our to our Azure DB, and let's see if we have any data in Table Personnel. So let's do select all the rows, and sure enough, there's the there's the data that we just added. So we've now created the database in Azure and actually are interacting with it. Now remember that our web server is still running locally, but it's connecting when it needs to use the database, it's connecting out to the Azure database. And you can go through the various posts put, um, like if we wanted to update um, Silly here and change their pay to $99, we could do that. And then we could go back and we could do a get and there it has changed, and we could uh, even delete it, right? So we could delete that person, and now there's no content. And now let's go see if it actually deleted it. If we go out here and look and do a refresh, we now have no rows in our database. So there you go. That's how, you, how easy it is to get uh, MySQL set up in Azure and working with our web service. Now the next step, the next video we'll do, We'll actually be moving our web application up to Azure as well. So we'll have not only the database running out there, but we will also have our web application running out there. So uh, that'll be great. We'll have everything then in the cloud, and we'll go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please watch the other tutorials that are out there if you haven't had a chance to do that. Thanks.